Hello, this is Ben Dosti, Pastor of Harvest Fresno, coming to you with another midweek message. I sure do miss everyone. Uh, I uh, each each week that goes by, it, you just hope that something's going to happen where there's going to be a change and uh, that we'd be able to uh, meet together uh, again. I long for that uh, for that time and uh, and eagerly anticipate when that would occur. <clears throat> In the meantime, I just want to encourage you to just reach out to uh, each other. Uh, if you're part of a small group, connect with people in your small group, even if you're not in a, a small group and you uh, just encourage each other, pray for one another, uh, try to stay connected as much as possible. Um, <clears throat> at this time, there's um, a message that I want you to hear. Uh, when we prepare messages, sometimes I go long, surprise, surprise. And so we edit messages and uh, there was a little bit of a miscommunication this past week and a certain portion got edited that I wish um, would have been there. And so what we'll do is um, we'll uh, show it right now. And uh, just to set it up, again, the, uh, the idea is that uh, we've been going over the Sermon of the Mount and uh, Jesus describes what it looks like to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Uh, what it looks like first to, to enter into the kingdom and then what does it look like to live uh, as a disciple and we see those characteristics and the culmination of that is if you are living that way then we have a responsibility uh, to um, to show people uh, what it means to to be a follower of Christ and we do that by being uh, salt of the earth and light of the world and um, the problem is that uh, in the church um, people are, are not being a light uh, there um, there's division that exists uh, not just in society but in the church and uh, with that brings uh, darkness uh, it brings bitterness it brings division uh, everything that the enemy wants and so uh, i want to encourage you to really check your uh, your hearts uh, watch the things that you say uh, and do the things that you post are they edifying? Uh, are, is someone who is on the other end of that, who is an unbeliever, are they going to be drawn to Jesus Christ? Do they, will they find what you say a winsome and attractive for Christ? Will they find that to be that beautiful light that we described in the, in the sermon? And so if it's not, then I just encourage you not to post, not to communicate in a way that's, that shows just bitterness and, and anger and, and division, because that's filled with the world. That's what the world, of, that's what the kingdom of man is filled with. Uh, being in the kingdom of God is supposed to be very different. We're supposed to act differently, and, but at the same time have contact in a way that uh, makes Christ uh, attractive. So I will uh, we'll show the, the rest of the, the message that uh, got uh, that you missed. And um, I just want to encourage you again to uh, people are watching. Uh, you know, you are again that that uh, the Bible that people are reading. They may not read uh, the Bible that exists that we you and I read right now. Uh, they're reading you, a uh, professing Christian. So just want to encourage you in light of that to be the salt and the light that the Lord called called you to be. Thanks and God bless. In the church have made a, a great error at times. We, we've bifurcated good deeds and the gospel. We've made them separate and distinct things. We have said that NGOs, non-governmental organizations, can go and uh, drill water wells in, this, in the Sahara. The, the church's job is to preach the gospel. Anyone could do charitable works. That's not the mission of the church. The mission of the church is just preach the gospel. Is that what Jesus is saying? That's not what Jesus is saying. You don't find Jesus saying the cure to the darkness and the evil and the corruption in this world is just preach the gospel. He doesn't say that. He makes it very clear, in fact. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Creator of all of heaven and earth gives us this command to reach a lost and dying world. He said, shine your good works so that people may see your good works and give glory to God. It's not an either or, it's a both and. 
Yes, the gospel is absolutely foundational. People cannot be saved apart from the gospel. We need the gospel. For 15 years that I've been preaching, I've been preaching the preeminence and the, the efficacy and the importance of the gospel. It is foundational and nothing could happen apart from it. But that is not exclusively what is required here for us to be a light in the world. Not my opinion. This is what Jesus is telling us. You see, when we stand up for truth, when we stand up for righteousness, when we stand up for holiness, we are shining the light of Christ into the world. We're making it attractive because when you see it in action, when you see grace in action, it is so otherworldly. When you see true compassion, when you see true kindness, when you see love in action, it just stops people in their tracks. And that is what we're called to do. See, one of the hallmarks of the, the great, here's a great irony. One of the hallmarks of what is called a theological liberal or a Christian liberal, I don't like labels, but there is something called a Christian liberal or a theological liberal. And one of the chief hallmarks is picking and choosing what you want to believe in the Word of God. That, that is a hallmark. And the great irony is for those who just say, just preach the gospel, they are actually being a theological or Christian liberal. They're picking and choosing what they want to believe because that's not what Jesus tells us. And, and it's over certain issues. It's over certain issues. You never hear just preach the gospel with respect to the abortion issue. We support the Pregnancy Care Center. In, in all our years supporting the Pregnancy Care Center, I have never heard anyone come up to me and say, well, why are we supporting them? All we have to do is preach the gospel. The organization is amazing, and the people in there are, uh, is in, are incredible, and there's just such kindness, there's such love, and they have uh, free services, and they make an impact in a lost and dying world. You never hear just preach the, the gospel to deal with the problem of orphans. Well, 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 just teach, just preach the gospel to the little buggers and they'll just figure it out themselves. I've never heard that. Right? Well, we don't say we don't address that issue with with just preach the gospel. Right? We want to adopt kids. We want to we want to help them, right? And yet people say that about social issues. You, you hear that about uh, dealing with the poor and the, uh, the oppressed and over race. You hear, just preach the gospel. But that's not what Jesus ever has des described as the, the antidote to the problem. He tells us very clearly what it is. So I want you to check yourself. Are you being a light? Are you being a light? A light stands for truth, for righteousness. You see, there are people that condemn social justice. But when you are doing that, I want to ask you, are you shining a light? There's, people say it's, it's a liberal Marxist agenda. Here, here's the problem. When you use a term like social justice, <laughs> it, it, it means different things to different people. And there is an element of a far left which believes in a redistribution of resources and, and, and assets and, and taking from the haves and give it to the have-nots. And, and that's one aspect, but that's, that's a minority position. When most people hear social justice, they're just referring to justice on social issues. So if you are someone who's condemning social justice, the, the, the average person is just listening and saying, what in the world is this person talking about? How can you not care about Christ? And then you find out that this person is claiming to be a Christian and he's condemning social justice. This doesn't make any sense. You're not being a light. You're not being a light. God has called us to be a light. Speak what is true. It's an incredible responsibility. It's an incredible privilege. We have to make sure, we have to guard our hearts and make sure that our words and our deeds 
reflect the light of Christ? Are they loving? Are they kind? Are they compassionate? Are they truthful? I've heard so many comments on, on social media of people uh, quoting these sources, and it, it, when you actually examine those sources, they're from sites that actually say these are for um, uh, satirical and entertainment purposes, and, and Christians are posting them as truth. And there's no repentance. And, and the world is laughing. It's not making an impact because it's not true. As a Christian, we need to guard our words. We have to make sure what we say is truthful. We have to make sure that our words are edifying and have a, and, or that, that, that grace so that when people hear it, they're attracted. That's what he's talking about. Light is beautiful. Light is beautiful. 